talk me through going from Blue Aces to Elves as a Punk Rocker. Well, can we can we start and do one before that? Can we go sure. four to Blue Aces to? Uh, sure. Four was an amazing band. I, yeah, I didn't I didn't bother typing four, but yeah, go ahead. Four was a great experience because it was guys that uh, were we were like four of the. I'll, I'll be honest, we were the best band in Eugene by far. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Potato Parcel. Yes, you heard that right. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music and the people that make it. And guess what? Elvis is back in the building, baby! My guests today are a brand new two-piece band blending the music and style of Elvis Presley with the raw, unfettered anarchy of punk. <laughs> uh, you should come for a punk show, stay for an Elvis-themed wedding. Please welcome to the channel, and hail to the king, Elvis is a punk rocker. Say hi, guys. Hey. Joe Schmo. Elvis, Elvis Punksley. Punksley. All right. In the house. I was going to say introduce yourselves. <laughs> Just kidding. Welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Clink. Cheers. Clink. Room six. Mm. So, right off the bat, normally I say why the, why the name, but it, it's pretty obvious. You're, you're taking Elvis Presley music, making it punk rock, so... What, who, whose brainchild was this? Scott's had this idea for an awful long time. We both absolutely believe that Elvis was the very first rebel, the very first punk rockers. So it was an easy choice. The name is something we've we've done a lot of different things, Scott and I, and he's always said, you know, let's incorporate. It's funny, I spoke to a band once that Scott played with and auditioned, and one of the things they said was Scott tried to change us into an Elvis band. <laughs> As if foreshadowing. Uh, by the way, if you want to be on the uh, Room 6 like them, want to be featured, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down below or click the Room 6 social media link. That's where you'll find all the things I'm up to online, ways you can support the channel should you so desire, and more. Thanks. Oh, and while you're down there, click the like, share, subscribe, all the YouTube things. All right, uh, so before I get into some of my, my questions about for, for you guys, I also wanted to say a special thank you to all the subscribers out there. I've uh, been having a lot of subscribers come in lately. Really appreciate you. Um, I do have a weird question, though. How come every time I get a subscriber, I also lose a subscriber? <laughs> like, I get some subscribers, and then next day, one goes away. Did you change your mind? Anyway, that's, that's me. That's my own little insecurities. So, I have a, a couple of usual interview questions that I ask. And uh, I'll sprinkle them in. Number one, you OG Room Sixers know what's coming. Um... I want to talk about earliest musical influence. Now, obviously, Elvis was part of it, but I want to know, do you remember that first moment you said, I want to do that in terms of just making music? Um, well, I came from a musical family. My mom was a composer and classical pianist and stuff. And they have a, my dad was in the record business a little bit in, in uh, a and in San Francisco area, so they had this huge record collection. And I'd go in and, you know, record player, and I'd, and I'd kind of pick a song by the, the cover, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, Herb Albert got a lot of play, obviously. Nice. That, one, that, that one, I looked at that <laughs> a lot. But, huge Beatles fan. So I'd say Sgt. Peppers, I'd be listening to that. Uh, Leon Russell's Carney album. Uh, Johnny Rivers uh, rocks the folk, you know? So it, it got, started getting into the guitar stuff. I got a guitar when I was 13, learning Beatles songs, learning songs. And, you know, so Beatles, Kinks. You know, The Who, that kind of the 60s stuff. I was listening to that. And the, you know, the classic rock, or the early classic rock, 50s, 60s stuff. Uh, later, you know, jazz band, and suddenly jazz influences, and, you know, uh, different things that just come in. You know, New Wave, I was in the 80s, loved all the New Wave stuff, you know, right. punk and New Wave stuff, so that was a big influence. And then, you know, it's just grown and grown. Once grunge came in, I kind of stopped listening to the radio. I didn't. I didn't care. I went back to some of the old stuff, stayed with the '80s stuff, and then uh, started getting a little more into the classic rock stuff. Um, my my brother was a huge Rush fan, and all my friends were Rush fans, and I I kind of despised Rush. I'm like, oh, these guys suck. Later in life, their start, social media links are down in the description if you want to send hate mail. Start. Well, no, later in life, I'm starting to listen to Rush. I'm going, 
damn, that, you know, that's pretty good, you know? Yeah. Uh, never got into Talking Heads, though. They were also in the Talking Heads. I was like, no, that's, that's one of the things we disagree on. Yeah, I was never, <laughs> never doing that. But, uh, but yeah, so anyway, the classic rock stuff, but even since then, it's been some weird, you know, Japanese, Shibuya, class, you know, Pizzicato 5, where they kind of mix the bossa nova and stuff, and just kind of groove stuff, melodies. Right. Um, you know, so that's kind of the influence of the Elvis stuff, you know, there's a great story I have about Elvis I can tell later, but that's you know that those were kind of the influence just growing up uh, in the 70s and 80s, right listening to all that kind of stuff. As far as the earliest musical, it, you didn't have a choice. You grew up musical house. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, there was yeah. I mean, well, although well, I had a choice because my mom's classical, uh, so so you know the, the classic stations on so all the time. Of Symphonies, course you're all that rock and yeah, roll. I'm like I'm like okay, what you know? Yeah, you know, okay, a little rollover Square. Beethoven, good, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, yellows rollover Beethoven. I love that, but. Uh, yeah, so that was definitely in the house. And the show tunes, they, they did a lot of shows. My mom was in musical theater, so a lot of it was going to see the show tunes and the shows and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it never grabbed me. Right. Again, find the Beatles. Find those, some of those albums that were like some real oddball stuff, you know, that it was like, oh, wow, that's cool. Like I said, Leon Russell Carney's album, you know, how many people have heard it? I don't know, not a lot, but it's a, it's a wild, cool album. There's some really cool songs in that, and I'd be just jamming and singing, and Babysitter would be over. I'm like, listen to this song. You know, like, you know, so. Right on. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Very similar. I grew up in a very musical home. Uh, my mother was a piano player. My Uncle Mike was a piano player. My uncle was a, uh, a regular in the San Francisco jazz scene. Um, knew, uh, knew Miles Davis. Knew the guys in the Tower of Power. Uh, I have an early picture of me at six years old sitting on David, David Garibaldi's drum throne. Nice. Um, uh, we knew uh, Bill Graham. Uh, used to go to, a, went to a lot of shows. Very first show I ever went to was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Sticks and um, Wow and Wishbone Ash at the Winterland Theater in 1975. Eleven years old was in my heyday, sitting on the side of the stage, thinking I was, you know, all that. Um, as far as first record I ever remember, it's Revolver. No, oh, wow. no, no, hands down. Right um, played it over and over again. My father had one of those big reel to reels. He was in the Navy, so brought back huge amounts of electronic equipment from Japan and so on. And, uh, you know, the big, uh, the big reel to reels, all that kind of stuff. Uh, my first musical um, experience was saxophone in the fourth grade. Um, I wanted to play drums since I was two. I mean, I can remember beating on things with my mother's bands and all that kind of stuff, like every other drummer does. Right. But uh, my mother, being the musician she was, was convinced that if I played another instrument and really understood music uh, theory, um, uh, how to read, I wouldn't grow up, as she put it, as an ignorant percussionist. <laughs> Which I, I really, really appreciate that because right. I can read. Scott knows. I mean, when we, when we talk about, you know, formatting and, and doing arrangements on songs, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not standing there ignorant. Like, uh, not, that any, not that any drummer I've ever met is ignorant, but I'm saying that, you know, there's some guys that just come in and beat, and that's about it, you know? And right. Well, I, they don't I, I like, like to be able they to, don't to push themselves or grow. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, uh, with that said, I mean, the way, where I got to learn how to play drums is um, my uncle being a trumpet player, um, you know, Maynard Ferguson records, but funk stuff like the Barquets, Parliament, Barquet, wow. Brothers Johnson. That's how I learned how to, my first beats I learned were funk beats. Nice. So, um, and I think I, a little bit of my playing kind of, you know, when I'm not doing Elvis, a lot of my playing really has got that pocket kind of, right. you know, groove to it. Speaking of playing, stick around. We're going to be seeing them perform up in room six after this, doing a kind of a blend, not really a mashup, but a blend uh, what would you say it was? It was That's uh, Alright Momo and CC Rider. That's Alright Momo and CC Rider, right. which sounds like it ought to work. So stick around for that. Um, so uh, on to slightly more personal questions. Now, actually before that, I mentioned in the intro that you're kind of a brand new band. Like, you both have been doing music for a while. Mm. You've been in other things. I wanted to ask, what's your favorite show memory for performing? Uh, for Elvis as a punk rocker, you haven't really done a whole bunch of shows, right? No, no, a couple, just a handful. So, yeah. what is just your bar none? Pull it out of the party. You're never going to believe this. Uh, what is that? You know, favorite show memory where some, yeah. things went off the rails, or you checked off a bunch of rock star wishlist things, or somebody went to jail, or whatever. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's a tough question, really. That's why I ask you. <laughs> uh, I, I I can tell you mine. Yeah, you go and I'll be I, while I'm so to listen. To I you. could I could go with the good ones, like you know. Playing House of Blues, having some kid in the front row when we were done ask for a guitar pick, only to find out he did that for every single guitar player of the show. He's just hedging his bets like, you never know, you might be somebody. But no, uh, playing some biker bar in town, 
uh, which I won't say the name, but playing some Biker Barn Town New Year's Eve, didn't get a single tip, four-hour show, and suddenly a guy runs across the dance floor with a mop to the bathroom. And you're thinking, oh, someone's had too much. The guy got stabbed. Ooh, ouch. So he survived, but just like... Uh, biker bar. What do you? Maybe, yeah, well, maybe, I mean, and maybe, we're talking yeah. like you're allowed to come in with your colors. Yeah, you know, with your patches and stuff. But um, the kind of biker bar also where they were, it was a stop on a, on a crawl. You'd see them; they'd have a drink, and they, their girls would dance, and then they would take off. So it was all. It was like a casino almost. It was a very uh, transitory crowd. But um, so yeah, what do you got? Top that. I got. I got. A, I got a really good one. When I lived in Rhode Island, I was lucky enough to uh, meet some very prominent musicians when I first got there. So I, being able to get in the scene, I was. I was there. I knew all four guys in a room full of blues. I met, I met the guy, or I knew the guy really well that that um, replaced Duke Robillard. So I'm in a room. I'm in a room one night at a at a jam. Um, that night, I got to play with Duke Robillard, and I met Jimmy Vaughn, and uh, you know. Um, understood the story of how Stevie really went from being in Austin to going national. It was him being brought to Rhode Island, played the New York, uh, the Rhode Island Jazz Festival. That's that famous shot of him standing in front of those JVC right. banners. And uh, it, was a, it was an amazing moment. Which and, you, nobody thinks Rhode Island for rock history. <laughs> oh, it's, you know, there's a lot of stuff, believe it or not, yeah. a lot of, lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, no, um, that was probably one of the high high points because you know I've, I'm a I'm a huge jazz and blues fan so nice. that was uh, that was awesome. Cool. Okay, so you know you can go with the what was the, the like the largest crowd or the biggest you know show that you did. I did a, a rockabilly festival thing back in Arizona. That was pretty cool because it was a huge stage and it was you know the big thing that that was cool. Uh, and then I was in another band, uh, 60s Garage, the Faded Pictures, and we we had a really great show uh, with just tons of people. And you know, pro, you know, the lead guitar, and so it was cool. But I, I think I'm gonna have to go back mm-hmm. to like my first kind of paid gig. I must have been. I was in high school, so my mom was in the local, uh, you know, musicians union. Phyllis Diller came Ooh. to the, do a weeks long show. Wow! And she needed a little opening band. So my mom, me on bass because I was a bass bass player as well, and then my stepbrother on drums. We are her little opening band. Right. And, and we had to come up with something for her to walk out in, right? Mm-hmm. Now, you know, I don't know how much of your audience knows Phyllis Diller. I guess you look her up. kids. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Fang, her husband Fang. Right. But uh, so, so I came up with the, almost like the Blues Brothers. Like, dun, 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 she comes out. So she I mean, did a flip. No, no, no. no. So I'm, I'm on stage. You know, and, and she's doing her show. She's, you know, stand up. And we're on stage the whole night. So the first night, it's the first night I'm hearing all these jokes. Right, I'm just cracking. I mean, I'm. I mean, she was funny. She's a funny lady. Did you do the the, the bassist? Boom. No, well, yeah, no. There was a couple rim shots. So definitely from the drummer. But by the by, like the seventh show, it was like a double matinee and stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm saying the lines yeah, before they're coming out. But right. but I and, and she was a wonderful person. Get, signed a little book for me and stuff. I've got it, actually a cassette tape. I taped it one night, so I've got a cassette tape in a box somewhere of it. The C kids. There you yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little cassette, a little you know, play, and hope the batteries don't run out. Keep a pencil nearby. Uh, <laughs> So I would say, not not that that's the highlight of my musical career or oh, life, but it was that, like the first. I got paid. I mean, I you know we you got, got paid, paid for that, and you got to and on stage with someone famous. That's uh, with my mom. Yeah. It's my idea, you know. And Dude, you're winning. Yeah, I, I that I, I guess you know thinking about it, it kind of brings yeah. back some memories. Yep, yep, I haven't thought yep. about that in a while. But. It beats a guy getting stabbed in the bathroom. Yeah, right? there we go. Right cool. Um, you mentioned, it's, believe it or not, it's on my notes. The fabled pictures. Can we talk about them? Oh, the faded pictures. Not the oh, fable. yeah, faded, faded pictures. The, that might be m- me in a hurry. The, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. The faded pictures. Yeah, yeah. W- w- what was that about? And that why? was awesome. So back in Phoenix, I grew up in Arizona, and I've only been out in Vegas about three years, or two and a half. Uh, so we there's uh, Jamie Lamb, who's from Vegas. He may you may some people may know him. He used to be a staple here. Uh, keyboards. So we're going '60s punk garage. Sure. Uh, which is not cons- like the punk '70s punk, but they call it kind of punk, their garage punk or garage, uh-huh. and keyboards, drums, bass, and and guitar, and we played about half originals and half covers, but they're covers that no one's ever heard of because unless you know what you, you know your thing about they're garage, deep cuts, garage. yeah, deep yeah. cuts or one-offs, you know, and uh, we were good. 
people, you know, there's a there's a nice scene there in Arizona yeah. uh, for that kind of stuff. And we were we were wanting to go to Europe because our Europe loves the garage stuff. They do. And you literally go on, you you just book your tour. They you know take you to Belgium, UK, Netherlands. You know you got this couple week tour. You got and you walk in all these bars packed. Right. No matter, it's not like a a, a fest. It's just Friday night. It's kind of like being a, an act here, and then going on the road. Suddenly you realize, oh. They don't get this all the time. No, and, and they're just places packed. So we, because we were all set to do that, COVID. So uh, yes. So and then our drummer, he get crystals in his ears, and he's like, I can't play anymore. Well, I'm sorry. It's, wait, cr- back up. So he get ver- like he start getting vertigo, and so you get some crystals. Crystal. These crystals develop in your ears, and you kind of get vertigo. It's inner like, ear, like an inner form. Right. Inner I just yeah. I've never heard yeah. crystals. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're called crystals. Wow. And and, uh, and he's like he's like guys, I just. You know, the loud music with doctor saying, hey, I can't do this. Yeah. So we lost a drummer, and then, like, right before COVID, and then we get another drummer, and then, we're, you know, we're trying to bring him up to speed, because this, we were, we were locked in. Mm-hmm. It was like, you know, everything really good, locked in. I mean, my soloing is different every time, but it's the same, you know, unfortunately, only 12 bars, whatever. And they yeah. never let me just it's, go, it's go, only, go. Only eight notes in the octave. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Do, yeah. You know, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, every time a little different, but, but anyway, it's, so that was a fun <laughs> band, and, and, and we could have really, we, we did put a set, we Put a little seven inch out, four songs. Uh, you know, I've got a box of them at home, uh, and uh, it was just unfortunately COVID, and it didn't go past that. And then I moved, and and that was that. Who, but, uh, who came up with the name? The Faded Pictures. The Faded. So that uh, I think Jamie did. Uh, it, it's reference to an old uh, song. I forget the group now, but it's it's kind of a reference to a, a garage, a famous garage okay. song. Uh, with the the of course the T H E E yeah you know you gotta have you I know, was that like that's the, a bit, you know, that's a bit yeah, much <laughs> the forgiven the you know all you know so that's that's that, that well, gives it the, the uh, problem there's a band in town uh, the uh, was it the the something bastards or uh, um uh, Jamie's band J- Jesse's band the the, the the surf band yeah I think so um, the, not arrogant I always called them the wrong thing sorry arrogant bastards or no no no, no. Um, damn it. That's they, they play. They play every play Monday night. They yeah, play the every Monday yeah, night. You know, Tiki. I'll figure it out. Put it on screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. He's gonna hate me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. All right. Um, so another question for you. Oh my goodness. Okay. And this is a bit of low hanging fruit, but any Elvis wedding stories? Because he is ordained to, oh, yeah. to you know he can marry you as a yeah, yeah, because as a, as punk Elvis or regular Elvis. The so. reason I ask is that yeah. I know that Elvis's family recently finally. A kibosh on like actual Elvis themed chapel wedding things. They were right. It, uh, Presley Enterprise, whatever. They, although the places in town here, they did get licensed. They did get. They did get. The, the, uh, they're allowed to do them. Oh, okay. Because uh, so the last I heard was it sounded like. It no happened. more. Right. Right. Yeah. Now you can get married by a lounge singer. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they were get, doing to work around. No. So. No. Yeah. So now they're allowed. The, I forget the Little White Chapel. Or there's a couple of chapels in yeah. town that. Yeah. They did get. You know whether they had to pay X right. amount for the licensing, but they were able to. Do well, Mike, it. I was going to ask, where yeah. can they get married by you? Well, they'd have to contact me. They can get married anywhere by me. You're but, a mobile, uh, mobile Elvis. Yeah, I go anywhere, right? Uh, I, I haven't done too much here in town. Uh, I, I did a, a new renewal ceremony at, at, under the uh, over the, the Paris. Uh, there was a, a couple recently came in from. I was telling the story a little earlier about from Scotland, and I, I'm on Facebook on the. Las Vegas weddings page or whatever. I, I peruse that because I, I can help someone out or something. There's always people asking for that. And this lady, uh, she's like, we just came in from Scotland. They lost our, our luggage. My husband's kilt was in there. Jeez. Does anybody have a kilt? Could, where could I rent a kilt, whatever? And people are answering. I'm like, I'm like, I have a kilt. I have a full high Scottish Highlands kilt. Obviously. The Prince Charlie. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I like to dress up, right? Uh, I got the, the Prince Charlie thing. Uh, you know, the sporn, the whole deal. And I wrote her said, I've got one. You're more than happy to to do it, to use it. And I said, "Oh my God, you're you know lifesaver, it's full service Elvis." Yeah, I go I go bring it to him. Uh, it fits him. He's my size. It worked out perfect. Um, I get I guess about a half an hour. And I said, oh, "You know, oh is your you know family all here?" What? They're like, "Oh, it's just us two. I'm like, "Oh my God, it's terrible." So I wrote him. I said, "Hey, you know, go at full service." And then it's you know I, you're the guy who loans you the thing gets to witness it. And I go. Do you want me to come as me, or do you want me to come as Elvis? And so they were all Elvis. Elvis. Yeah, you know. So I mean, you know, you either love him or you hate him, right? You, right. Either, you want him there or not? So, so I show up, and and fortunately, their luggage did come like a half an hour before, right? And they, so he did get his, which was the same black watch tart in his mind. Uh, but uh, I, I showed up in there, so I got the picture. So I'm a, I'm a legend in Scotland right now. They, they, <laughs> they, they, you know, they post to all their friends, they're like, "You're a legend," you know. So. Um, but yeah, uh, more than willing to help. I, you know, I've got the whole 
you know, the little yeah. little uh, script on it. You know, anybody, you know, what's funny is Burn and Love, all that stuff. I've got a, I've got a whole tilt and everything upstairs. Yep. In room six. They're all right. Awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, I just don't wear it because I'm 51. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just don't wear it because well, I don't have the, the need. Yeah. We used to we used to do rent fairs a lot. So, perfect. perfect. Yeah, yeah exactly. I've and and a rent fair, you're like, this is awesome. Yeah. I can breathe. <laughs> I ran up and I ran up and down Fremont Street last St. Paddy's, Paddy's Day in a, in a bright green kilt. So of I course you did. Yeah, I did. Now, uh, let me add oh, one thing. Please. Kind of for, your, for the audience. Yes. I did ask him. You know, I, I just want to make sure, are you a true Scotsman or not in my kill? And, uh, and his wife forbade him. Regimental. Says, yeah. His wife forbade said, no. I said, thank you. You know. <laughs> so, I mean, but but a true Scotsman did wear my, my kill. But yes. he, he was not, you know, Scotsman in birth, but not in Yeah. Birth. So when I was wearing it, our child was like two. So I did not. <laughs> I did not. Because you never know. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, what you, he was like, stop it. Okay. So, um, Josef. Joe. Yes. Can we talk about the mixtape Redux Do? Oh, there we go. That's that's actually another project with Scott and I. I know. It is. Uh, it, it, is it is. It is beautiful because um, it actually takes songs from the '80s, and we've completely remashed them into something they're not. Either a bossa nova beat or a uh, turn it into a country song. We do a we do a version of Rio by Duran Duran that you wouldn't recognize what it is. But you'd know. You'd but, be like, well. You're a thing I know. Yeah. We're an aha band. It's like person aha. have a, you know aha. That's uh, our shtick. It's I was like, gonna say you you do that song. I, I, yeah, take on take, take <laughs> and so that might be yeah, yeah. a little high for his yeah, yeah. his range, but uh, you got drumsticks. Yeah. Whack him anyway. Yeah, exactly right. Um, but, so so for, is that anything like the Blue Aces? Blue Aces. Okay, because I lived in Oregon before I came. Because so. talk me through going from Blue Aces to Elvis is a punk rocker. Well, can we can we start and do? One before that, can we go sure. four to Blue Aces to... Uh, sure. Four was an amazing band. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't bother typing four, but yeah, go ahead. Four was a great experience because it was guys that uh, were... We were like four of the... I'll, I'll be honest. We were the best band in Eugene by far. <laughs> and if you go back and look, there's a great gig of us doing at the Vet Center in, on, on, on Willamette right in uh, in Eugene that was was off the charts. Um, Jamie Mishley... Uh, Bar um Tom, uh, Tom, I'm uh, going to blank on Tom's last name, but he was a bass player in a Tower of Power tribute band, so just nice. was dead on. The, after that band dissolved, for many reasons that you know, rock do. and roll bands do, yeah, yeah. Um, the Blue Aces was a band that was from another band called the Fred May Band. We, I went, came back to two of the members and said, hey, let's put a band back together. Bart was in was in four with us. We brought Bart in as a hard player. Um, Fred's an amazing keyboard player and was a uh, professor at uh, University of Oregon. Um, we did a lot of gigs. And I, before I left, I, I came here to take. We came here to take care of my mother-in-law, and uh, we had to leave pretty suddenly out of Rhode Island. I auditioned and got our got them a drummer before I left. Makes me sleep at night. Makes me realize right. that I didn't leave them hanging. Well, it's, it's they the still right to this do. day. Yeah. And the drummer that I gave the job to still, you know, makes comments on her Elvis stuff and says, "Hey Joe, I'm loving what you're doing." Blah blah blah. So it's like I, I feel good. Right. You know, Lee, I, did, I didn't left kind of abruptly, but it was a, an amazing experience. Both of those. Guys. <clears throat> I've actually uh, I fronted a cover band for seven years uh, called Best Name I Ever Came Up With, Revolving Door. Huh. <laughs> yeah, if you know, you know. Yeah. Um, it started as a seven piece, ended up as a four piece. We went through seven drummers, ended up back at drummer number two. Eventually lost the keyboard player. Bass player was who we got this time. Cool, he's gonna show up five minutes before the show starts, you know, and he'll know all the songs, you know, that kind of thing. And um, and, and the only original people by the end of it were me and the lead guitarist, and I was the front guy, so I did like you know the rhythm and uh, singing, and the. Uh, the microphone you're going to be singing out of oh, yeah? was given to me by that drummer. Wow. He nice. said, I want you to have a real microphone. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think I was singing through like, um, what was I singing through? I I don't, I can't even remember it so bad, but he gave me like an SG-58 oh, yeah. and, uh, or an electro voice. Oh. That's right. That's what it is. So anyway, shout out to Bob. Drummer Bob is my, my child calls him. You, you talk about cool names for bands. One of my favorite music history things is that people don't realize that Billy Gibbons was a psychedelic rocker before he became part of yeah. uh, and his first two bands were the Moving Sidewalks and the 13th Floor Elevators 
Wow. So those are two very cool names for bands, but they were some of the original like that when that psychedelic rock kind of came into being. You know who people don't think of as, as ever being psychedelic? Kenny Rogers. I just oh. dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. <laughs> Listen to that song. They were having a good time in the studio, if you know what I mean. So, uh, Speaking of having a good time, we're going to take a quick break here. I think I'm getting low here, so we're going to take a little, quick little booze break and hear a message from future Josh. So, booze break. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. You know what I love? Surprise gifts. You know what I really love? Gifts that are clever, unexpected, and most of all, edible. But what the heck? Let's throw someone's face on it while we're at it. Potato Parcel is a service that allows you to send anyone a personalized message on a potato. Thinking of sending a birthday? Congrats, get well soon card? This is a quirky and hilarious alternative to the traditional card. Your friends, family, and others will get a kick out of it. Just for watching this video, and for a limited time only, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off your order by entering the coupon code TAKE10 at checkout. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Potato Parcel for being a sponsor, and let's get back to today's show. We're back, and if that sponsor spot interested you at all, please consider clicking the link down below. You'll save some money, I'll get some money, it's a win-win, baby. Also, if you are at all interested in sponsoring the channel in terms of, you know, buying some merch on room6.shop, whatever, hit that social media link down there. It'll tell you all the places that you can. I've got Patreon. I've got room6. You know, uh, dot, uh, shop, and other things. So a couple more questions, and then we're going to check out Elvis is a Punk Rocker upstairs in room 6. Switching back to kind of my usual interview questions. Well, I, I'm not going to bother asking you how would you on your musical sound because we've kind of established that <laughs> but <clears throat> what i will ask is where what's what's in the future for elvis as a punk rocker like what's the, what do you got working on bear in mind this is probably not going to post until uh, mid-june okay do, do you mind if i do you want to do you want to take over no, no. Uh, i've i've got a pretty solid vision of where i saw this going scott's original idea was something that pushed us into you know, trying to decide if it was going to be a proof of concept. We, we realized that when we uh, when we did that gig in uh, in Phoenix. Okay. I see us every single gig um, honing in the, the, the stage performance, honing in the uh, interaction between the crowd. M one of my goals would be next summer to put this on Fremont Street. With I can the see whole, it. With the whole big screen behind us with a digital presentation. And I always wanted to play to one of those big balloons that come down when... You know, you look like you're 50 feet tall. Oh, God. <laughs> and then pull down, and that's, it's just us, you know. Um, that would be really, that would just be the ultimate. Um, so we want to, like, we want to take it on the road. We want to have more people experience what we're doing. And some of the things we've been experimenting with is we want to kind of start to add possibly some of that stuff that Elvis did with the Million Dollar Quartet and convert that stuff into what we do. And then ultimately start to rehearse and have Elvis himself do songs that weren't necessarily Elvis or sing songs that were in Elvis in a, in a, in a, in a different light. So right on. Um, did I do that justice the way you had said the other day? Uh, I guess. Uh, you know. <laughs> you initially, initially I started it, or just you know, I do the Elvis tribute thing, you know, jumpsuit Elvis in the 70s. Uh, so I, again, wanted I'm like, I, you know, I'll take this. So I, I had the idea of doing Elvis doing 80s music. Mm -hmm. What if Elvis lived, right? That's the whole concept kind of. What if Elvis <laughs> lived past 77? Uh, you know, punk rock was just coming in then. Of course, the new wave stuff, which I'm a big fan of. So I'm like, so I, I posted a couple things of, of doing my Elvis singing those songs in the Elvis style and never did a proof of concept to see on a show if it worked out. But, it, it, you know, my my music room, it sounds kind of cool. I'm like, ah, it's kind of cool. And so that's kind of where this idea went. And I'm like, well, let's, let's try it with kind of the punk beat or the punk sound and getting it that way. So... Um, yeah, like I said, ideally, you know, adding uh, Carl Perkins, Johnny Cash, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, the, you know, the, the quartet there, because they were all rebels, you know, the early rock and roll. Again, how, you know, punk can you get, right? right. Don't, you know, don't, the parents didn't like them. It's this new rock and roll, new fangled thing. Um, so we might try some of that and, and see where it goes. I'm just enjoying playing. Hopefully the people enjoy it. You know, it's not for the money. It's not for the fame. I'm married, not for the chicks, you know. <laughs> and uh, we've been together for more than a year, and we're, we, 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 we still like each other. That's there you go. <laughs> Every other day. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so hopefully, again, we get out there. We've got some shows coming up we'll talk about later. 
Um, hopefully people dig it. They get we get out there. We get invited to be on the bill with some other shows. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, you know, we, I mean, you know, Elvis had 400 plus songs. Right. You can't punk all of them up, of course. Some of them just don't How work great. Right. They'll all. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but we've got enough to put on a good show and uh, we're working in the videos, working and we got some different ideas with. Yeah, I've got some different ideas with uh, adding some some kind of different things to it, kind of making it entertaining. You know, and the more we play, the more confident we're getting, the better we're getting, and it's just going to get better and better. Like right? I, I think our our concept is is that we want to make a show that someone remembers, uh-huh. and if they come back and see us a second time, we did our job, and that really is our the core philosophy. There you go. Um, which leads me to my final question. You made it. Yay! Last question. So uh, we're going to circle. This is a again. The OG room sixers know what's coming. This is a question I ask of all my prey. Uh, we're going to circle back to that earliest musical influence question. We're going to pretend we're talking to little you. Oh. Okay. And really, this this grew out of a question designed, let's talk to new musicians. How yeah. do I be like you? Kind of thing. What is one thing you wish you could go back and tell yourself when you said, I want to do this. I want to go down this twisted road that is making music. What is one thing that you wish you could tell yourself, hey, kid, you're going to need to know this. And don't say change your strings. Yeah. I don't change my strings. Uh, <laughs> Same. Yeah, well, go ahead. Music well, teacher. I, I think I would have pushed a lot harder to go to to music school. I did spend I did spend one summer going to LA and and and, and doing something in MI, um, but I think I would have, have really pushed and had my parents. You know, I wanted to maybe go to an art school or those kind of things and go to performing arts school and and, and, and live it one hundred percent. Get immersed in that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the only thing that I would have changed. I mean, I, I think having that family support that I had, you know, having the musical influences that were in the house, um, getting a chance to go to shows like a maniac as a young man, um, really sort of gave me a, a broad and, and immersed feeling of music anyway. So there you go. Next. Yeah. No, I went back. Uh, there's, there's kind of two things. One uh, for, for our younger, you know, and, and of course we grew up pre-internet. Pre cell phones, pre YouTube, pre all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So the information at when I was a kid was not out there. I got music books, you know, and stuff like that. So two things. One, when I was, you know, I want, yeah, I love music, love playing music, but my mother was, you know, weekends playing nights, things like that. And so when I got to college, and when I could have maybe gone on and gone to a Berkeley school of music or something better, bass probably, because I'm a better bass player than a guitar player. But uh, I'm like, I don't want to be working every. Friday night, Saturday night. I want a family, you know. My, you know, see, my mom's never home. Not that she's never home. Mom, I love you. You're a great mom. Yeah. You know, but you know, life of a musician is sometimes not kiss, nine to five. Kiss your weekends goodbye. It's yeah. not that thing. So, so I'm like, you know, I didn't want that. I go to college. I go, you know, I'm going to have a career, do all that stuff. Then later in life, you're like, wow, you know, music's always been an important part. Mm-hmm. It's like, hmm, if I had taken it more seriously or, or pursued that. You know, who knows? I'm happy where I'm at. I mean, I can't, I have no complaints. But, you know, if I told myself, yeah, you know, making music's what really makes you happy. And in the future, you know, working nine to five didn't make you as happy as playing the music. You right. Know? So, and the other thing would have been, as a guitarist, learn those scales, man. <laughs> once, once I got out of the pentatonic box, yeah. it opened everything up. And I didn't, I didn't get that till much later in life. So. Yeah, it's boring, but it's worth it. But practice, yeah. Well, I couldn't say it any better. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming on the channel. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. So, we are going to see them go upstairs and perform that lovely little blended mashup thingy, my Bob. And then we're going to catch you in the outro. In the meantime, temporarily say, oh. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, our next show. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. We next are, our next show is uh, May 18th at the uh, brand this new. This isn't going to post till mid June. Uh, oh. Okay. I got popular. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Well, hey, listen. Uh, Fucker. More power to you. Check those social media links so you can know where they're playing. And we do sell merch too. If you want to go to the Facebook page, let us know. Pop us a uh, yeah, pop, pop us a line on uh, the Insta the uh, instant message, and we'll uh, tell you I can get a shirt. There you go. In the meantime, temporarily say goodbye. We'll see you upstairs. Room six. The year is 1977, August 16th. We lost the king of rock and roll. Elvis Presley. At the same time, a new genre of music is starting to spread through the U.S. and U.K., punk rock. Some say Elvis was the original punk rocker. We don't know if Elvis would have embraced this new music with its rawness and anti-establishment sentiment. But we like to think Elvis would have appreciated this new form of musical expression, 
just as he did in the early 50s. Here is our interpretation of punk rock Elvis. Hope you enjoy and know that we revere the king. <laughs> social media links down below if you want to see more videos like this please click up there if you want to subscribe click over there you know ring the bell all that jazz and if you want to hear my own music which is definitely not elvis and definitely not punk right on the other side of that guy's head remember to be amazing and we'll see you next time on room six say goodbye fellas Joe schmo elvis punk's way go 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 burn love